Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a Minecraft 1.15.1 server. We previously had a server on Minecraft 1.15, but 1.15.1 is out and we're going to be going through every single step of getting a server up and running in Minecraft 1.15.1 so you can play with your friends. Now first and foremost, I do want to mention that this is not a 24 hour server. It is only up and running when your computer is up and running. Meaning that if you know your computer turns off, your power goes out, your server goes offline, in that case. On top of that, it is only meant for your friends, family, people you trust, people you'd be okay coming right on over to your house because it uses your own IP address, specifically your public IP address, and via that people can figure out where you lived and the latitude and longitude coordinates as well as come in and actually DDoS you and take your internet offline, which is just annoying in and of itself. So this is only meant for friends, family, people that you can trust. On top of that, it does use your own computer's resources. So you need to have a pretty good computer in order to run a server. It doesn't have to be the top of the line i9, but it needs to be a pretty good newer i5 or i7 processor with at least 16 gigs of RAM in order to run a server. However, what if you don't have that? What if you don't have a good enough computer to run a Minecraft server? What if you want a server that can be given out to anybody and everybody, or one that's up 24 hours a day, seven days a week? What do you do in that case? Well, we have a solution for you, and that solution is Apex Minecraft Hosting. You can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Get an incredible 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server, meaning it's up all the time. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It also is DDoS protected, meaning you don't have to worry about getting hit offline or anything like that. It also is hosted on Apex Minecraft Hosting's hardware, right? Meaning you can have a, if you can play Minecraft, you can play on your server if it's hosted via Apex Minecraft Hosting. On top of that, it doesn't have to be port forwarded. It doesn't have to be set up locally. It can be set up in just a few minutes. Literally, you set up your server and get an IP address and join your server. It is that quick, that easy, and that simple. You don't have to do anything like port forwarding or going through and you know figuring out what the IPs are or anything like that. Apex says, here's your IP, you join your server, and it is that quick and that easy. You can set up an Apex server in under five minutes in just a few clicks. I'm setting up one for 1.15 on your screen during this little sponsorship slot here. So if you want a great server, Apex Minecraft hosting is the way to go. You can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. We actually host our own server, play.breakdowncraft.com on Apex Minecraft hosting. So not only do we love them, we trust them ourselves. So check out Apex Minecraft Hosting at the first link down below. Again, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. However, what if you do want a server that is meant for just your friends and family and your computer can run it and all that stuff? Well, let's go ahead and show you exactly how to do that. The first thing you wanna do is go to the second link down below and that's gonna take you here. This is our video on how to make a Minecraft 1.15 server. Specifically, it works for 1.15.1 as well. We'll be updating it after this video here, but it goes through all the steps of creating a 1.15. 15.1 server. However, that's just there in case I go too fast, right? I'm going to go through everything in this video in more video format. However, some people do like and prefer a text tutorial, and if that is you, here it is. However, once you're here, you want to go ahead and click on this green download Minecraft button, and basically what that's going to do is take you off to where you can download the Minecraft server files for Minecraft 1.15.1. Once you're here, you want to click on Minecraft underscore server 1.1.15.1. That's going to download the server.jar for Minecraft 1.15.1. So when we click that, it's going to download in the bottom left of our screen down here. And on Mozilla Firefox, it'll set up in the center of your screen and you'll need to save the file. However, on Google Chrome, we need to keep the file. This file is 100% safe to keep or save, depending on which browser you're using, because we are literally downloading it from Minecraft.net. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and now minimize our browser. And here on our desktop, we have the server.jar. If this isn't on your desktop, no worries. It's in the downloads folder on your computer. To find that, go ahead and click on the little Windows icon. For me, this is in the top left. For you, maybe in the bottom left of your screen. When you click on that, go ahead and type in downloads. And then you will have, oh, I misspelled downloads there, didn't I? Type in downloads. And then you'll have this downloads file folder in Windows. Click on that and you'll find server.jar in here. Drag it to your desktop just for ease of use. Once the server.jar is on your desktop, we need to go ahead and create a new folder on your desktop. To do that, go ahead and right click, create a new folder. You can name this folder whatever you want. I'm gonna name it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I naming it that? Because that is our incredible grief protected survival server as well as our incredible skyblock server 
awesome network Minecraft server. Play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. We have Grief Protected Survival. A medieval Survival has over 30 custom quests. Aquatic Survival has an amazing size shop economy. And Skyblock has custom OP enchantments, as well as custom islands, and just tons and tons and tons of awesome stuff. Come play with us. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. If you're looking for a survival server, Play.breakdowncraft.com is the one for you. Nevertheless, once you've got your folder created here, go ahead and take the server.jar and drag it in to that folder. Then go ahead and double click on that folder. And in here, we want to right click, create a new text document. So right click, new text document. You can just leave that titled new text document and then double click on it to open it with Notepad. Once you've got this open here, you want to go ahead and go to the description of this video. And down there, you will find this. This is basically a code that will allow you to run your server. It also dictates how much RAM your server has. So as you can see, two gigabytes of RAM, three gigabytes of RAM, or four gigabytes of RAM, depending on how much RAM you want your server to have. I'm gonna go ahead and give it four gigabytes. That's overkill for most servers. Most can run on two to three, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that because why not? Let's go ahead and paste that into our new text document there. And then let's go ahead and do file, save as. Then you wanna save this as a file name run.bat. So make your file name run.bat. And then your save type as needs to be all files. So save as type is all files. File name is run.bat. Then go ahead and click save. You can then close out of notepad and delete the new text document that you created. You should now just have run.bat and server.jar in your server folder here. Now we go ahead and double click on the run.bat file. It will go ahead and run your server, except it'll fail. As you can see, you need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server. Awesome, so we go ahead and press any key to close out of our console there. We will have the EULA.txt. Go ahead and double click on the EULA.txt, and in here, you can go to the EULA here, and as long as your server isn't gonna break the EULA, you can change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then we wanna go ahead and do file, save. Now we can double click on the run.bat file and it will go ahead and open up your Minecraft server. Now, you might be like, well, that was pretty easy. And at this point, it is pretty easy to get a Minecraft server up and running. However, right now, only you can join your server, right? Your friends can't join your server because you need to port forward. You need to port forward in order to allow your friends to join your server via your public IP address. So nevertheless, once we get this all up and running here, we'll see done. Once your server console says done, there it is, we can go ahead and stop the server because we need to port forward, right? So we type stop here, hit enter, and then we're gonna go ahead and stop the server. And now we need to port forward to allow your friends to join your server. So how do we do that? Well, we've helped millions of people port forward. It is a very, very simple and very, very easy process. So let's go ahead and get that done. To do that, you want to click on the little Windows icon. For me, it is in the top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen. Again, bottom left of your screen, most likely. But click on the little Windows icon at the top or bottom left of your screen. And when you open that, you want to go ahead and type in CMD. You'll then have Command Prompt here. Go ahead and open up Command Prompt. And then in Command Prompt, you simply want to type IPCONFIG. IP config, exactly like that, all one word, and hit enter. This will then give you a lot of information that you just don't need, right? You're going to have to scroll up probably, but what we're looking for is where it says IPv4 address here and default gateway here. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up a new notepad document. And then in this new notepad document, we're going to copy over our IPv4 address, which for me is 192.168.1.123. So 192.168.1.123. And we need to copy over our default gateway, right? So whatever your default gateway is, copy it over here, except you want to get just the numbers. See this one up top where it's like FE80, 9610, 3A, F, 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 F. You don't want that one. If it has any letters in it at all, it's not the correct one. You just want to get the one that is numbers. And as you can see here, 192.168.1.1 is what mine is. And that is what you want to copy over here because you just want the one with the numbers. If there's any letters in there, move on by. That's not the one that you want. Once you have your IPv4 address and default gateway copied over, by the way, they're most likely different from mine, we can go ahead and close out a command prompt. Now come back over to your server folder here, double click on this server.properties file. That will then probably ask you if you want to open it in notepad. You do want to open it in notepad and then scroll down until you see server dash IP equals here. Next to the equal sign, take your IPv4 address that you got from the command prompt, 
copy and paste that next to the IP, the server dash IP equals here in the server dot properties. Don't put any spaces or anything like that. It should be at one string server dash IP equals and then your IP. Then go ahead, do file, save. And now we can go ahead and port forward. To do this, you wanna open up your browser. So just open up the browser that you're in and open up a new tab here. Now, in this new tab, you wanna type in your default gateway. So let's go ahead and copy our default gateway here. So copy, paste, boom. And then that will open up a screen that most likely looks completely different from what you see on your screen now. That is okay though. There'll be one similarity. There will be some sort of a login box, like some kind of a login box here. So if I go ahead and sign out, now there will be some sort of a login box here where you'll need to log into your router. As you can see, there is mine. Yours may just pop down from the top of the screen, maybe in the center of your screen. Who knows where it's at, but you will have some kind of login box on your screen somewhere. What do you enter in here? Well, it's gonna be your router's username and password. This is different from your Wi-Fi password, by the way. But you can get your router's username and password from the description down below, our link on how to find your router's password. When you go down there, go ahead, and scroll down and go through all of the methods here to find your router's password. Most people, however, find it from method three. However, if you, or by method three, I should say. However, if you don't, you may have to contact your ISP to get it. However, 99% of people get it from method three right there. So yeah, go get your router's password, then come back to your router here and just log right on in to your router's password, right like so, boom logs you right on into your router here. Now again, yours is most likely going to look completely different from mine, but that's okay. Because not only am I gonna give you all of the common terms that are used for port forwarding on routers today, we also have an in-depth guide that goes over how to port forward on today's top routers from Linksys, like what I have, to Netgear, to Verizon, to AT&T, to Cisco, all of them are covered in this video. And guess what? Even if your router isn't covered in that video, no worries whatsoever, because most likely your router is very similar to the routers in that video because most routers are just made from a few different companies and sold under different brands. Because of that, a lot of their interfaces are the same and a lot of the terminology is the same. So even if you have different like interface and it looks different on the back end, you're going to be looking for very similar things as mentioned in that video. So I would recommend just watching that entire video, picking up all the different names that it can be and seeing how to do it on all these different routers. That way, when you log into your router, you'll be like, this isn't exactly like that video, but this looks similar similar enough that I can figure out where it's at. However, when we port forward here, I'm gonna be giving you all of the common names and things like that that you can expect from port forwarding and what port forwarding could be called. So here we are back on my router and port forwarding for me is in security. However, for you, it may be an advanced, it may be an advanced advanced, it may be an apps and gaming, it may be a NAT gaming, NAT gaming, it may be a NAT triggering slash forwarding, NAT forwarding. It may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It's most likely in a security tab or an advanced tab or an administration tab. On Netgear, it was an advanced admin and then you could get to port forwarding. So it could be also in an admin tab. There's tons of different places for it, but don't be afraid to click around your router to find it. It is going to have it. You just have to click around to find it. And then once you do, it's going to be probably called port forwarding of some sort. For example, for me, it is in security. Then apps and gaming. As I said, that could be a name for it. So apps and gaming. Then single port forwarding, right? Finally, we found the word port forwarding. That's what we want, single port forwarding. Yours is probably gonna be called something completely different, but one thing that'll be similar is you'll have an ID or an application name, it'll ask for two ports, whether it's internal, external, port one, port two, whatever it says, it'll ask for port, it'll have a protocol, and then it'll have a device IP or local IP listed, and then you'll probably be able to turn it on and off. So from there, we want to add a new single port forward. And for application name, we want to put Minecraft. This could also just be called ID. Basically, this is just going to be an identification, so you know what this port forward is for. External port, internal port, port one, port two. It doesn't matter what it says. If it mentions the word port whatsoever, guess what you're doing? You're entering in 25565. As you can see, external port 25565. Internal port, it says the word port, everybody. What are we doing? 25565. Protocol, you want this to either be both or you want it to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, but either way, you wanna make sure both protocols are selected. If you can't select both protocols, just do this port forward twice for each protocol, once for TCP and once for UDP, but most likely you'll have a option to be able to select both of them. Now for device IP, this is going to be your IPv4 address that we got from over here. So in our case, it is 1.123. 
Now, you may also ask for an external or outside IP on your port forward. If you are, that's perfectly fine because we all have to get our external IP in order to join our server anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, you can check out the link in the description down below to what's my IP address. Dot com. This is going to show you your IP address here. However, for me, you can only see those last three digits, 211. Everything else is blocked out. You can also see why it's important to only give this server to people you trust over here, because as you can see, it shows your state, your city, your zip code, and even latitude and longitude coordinates are listed here on this webpage. So that's why it is so important to only give this to people you trust. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and copy my IP address there. If you needed this on your port forward, you can come back over here and enter it in on your port forward. Then make sure to apply and save your port forward. And then finally, we can minimize our browser. Now we need to run our server as well as open up Minecraft 1.15.1. I'm just going to go in here and select latest release for Minecraft 1.15.1. There we go. Click on play. Our server is starting over here. We are joining on in and everybody, the hard part of starting your Minecraft server is done. Congratulations. Once you're through port forwarding, everything else is just pretty easy and simple to get through. Um, at this point, if you can't join via your public IP address, I will show you how to join without it, right? So we're first gonna join with our public IP and then we're gonna show you how to join without your public IP there. Now, one thing I will say that could happen to you because it's just happened to me as we were starting this world, Minecraft crashed on us, right? So as you're starting your server, if you try to open up Minecraft at the same time, sometimes it'll just go not responding and it will crash. If that happens, no big deal. All you gotta do is just uh, basically reopen Minecraft. For some reason, Java doesn't like having two things trying to open at the exact same time using the exact same stuff, and that's what just happened. But they're perfectly fine doing it separately. So as you can see, it crashed there at the beginning, but this time it opens right on up without any problems whatsoever. So we have Spax Pure BD Craft installed. Let's go ahead and install that real quick and uh, then we'll be good to go. So now from the Minecraft main menu, we can just go ahead and click on multiplayer. And then we wanna go ahead and click direct connect here. Wait, what is that? Play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. Come play and enjoy. Let's go ahead and click on direct connect here. And then in here, we're gonna place our public IP address. As you can see, it's all blacked out except for these last three digits. You can still see 211 there to show you that it's the same one that we used earlier and got off the website. Now we go ahead and click join server. It will join us on into the server here and we'll be good to go. Now, some people might have an issue and might not be able to join off of your public IP address. That's perfectly fine as long as your friends can join off of your public IP address. However, if your friends can't join off of your public IP address, then you need to make sure your port forward is correct and make sure that there's not a firewall either on your computer, such as Windows Defender, or on your router blocking the connection via that port. 99% of the time, that is what the issue is if someone cannot join your server via your public IP address. However, if you can't join your server via the public IP address, what exactly do you do? Well, you're just going to join it via your local IP address. So as you can see, here we are standing looking at this jungle. If we disconnect and then click direct connect again, we will be able to go ahead and enter in our local IP address. That is our IPv4 address here. So if we copy our IPv4 address from over here on our notepad document, paste it in and click join server, it will log us right on another server exactly where we were at without any issues. So you may not be able to join off of your public IP address, but you will be able to join off of your IPv4 address. Your friends though will only be able to join off of your public IP address. And if they cannot, it is because there's an issue with your firewall or with your port forward. But there you all have it. That is how you can set up a Minecraft server for Minecraft 1.15. One. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if we helped you get your server up and running without any issues or, you know, if we did, hopefully we solved them in the video. That's what we try to do. So nevertheless, thank you all so, so much for watching. People like to know the seeds of the videos. Oh, that actually gives me an idea. What if you want to opt yourself on this server where you can do game mode creative slash seed, all the cool commands that Minecraft servers have. To do that, you want to go over to the console here. Basically, this is your server console. It's going to record everything that happens on your server. And here you want to type open. OP and then your username. So OP and then Nick's Games is my username. Your username is going to be different from mine and then hit enter. Then you'll see Nick's Games has been made a server operator here. So now we can do things like game mode creative if we want to and do all sorts of stuff like slash seed if you wanted the seed to this world. Because it does look kind of cool. Looks like a kind of cool vi uh, jungle world there. But nevertheless, thank you all so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and come play with us on the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. Play.breakdowncraft.com. We have Greek protected survival, custom skyblock. You will absolutely love it. And I can't wait to see you all online. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I'm out.
pace. 